the other and everybody's smiling this is the way how to welcome the sabbath day and tonight we would like to welcome you to the adra the adra department is sponsoring this uh, uh vesper program and uh, before that i would like to acknowledge our visitors uh, from inspire and from montreal bonjour again <laughs> This is the only thing. Como se va? I learned it from my daughter. I mean, he's uh, doing this uh, bilingual thing in the in the in the app. So I would like to announce the sequence of our program tonight. Our praise team will be our SA officers from Deer Lake. Uh, two handsome gentlemen and a grade 10 and, and grade 12 officially and uh, we are so happy that uh, there's so many students in their lake uh, Luigi the grade 12 student is the class uh, no the school president is a president and Ronald is the is a treasurer so the, the president and the treasurer uh, for our praise team. And our opening prayer will be blessed because it's our uh, youth pastor who will do the opening prayer tonight. And uh, the, the special song will be given by uh, Mariel and company. Yeah. Uh, and Levina. And this message that we'll have tonight will be talking uh, about ADRA and another message from that. It will be done by no other than our ADRA coordinator in this church. I told him, I haven't heard you for a while. I want to listen. One of my favorite speakers in this church, Brother Joel uh, Batulayan. And uh, closing prayer by the speaker. And of course, we would like to thank our pianist tonight, our very own Brother Renz Thingson. So uh, before I, uh, before the praise team will come up, um, in Psalms 122, one, it is said, I was glad that we come to the house of the Lord. May the Holy Spirit and God will be joining us tonight as we uh, have our BISPER program. Uh, I would like to call the praise team to start. Happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath. Isn't it great that it's Friday? Finally. Yes. Let us start off our BISPER worship by singing hymn, hymn number 10, Come Christians, Join Us Sing. Thank you. 
Opening song this evening is found in hymn number 27, Rejoice Ye Pure in Heart. Shall we all stand? Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we are grateful for the rest that you have given us and for the rest that we will receive through this Sabbath, that we will focus on you and bask in your presence. Be with us in this vespers of ours, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
Good evening, brothers and sisters. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Okay. I just want to read to you as our opening verse, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 11. If you're, you have your Bible with you, you can join me by reading it silently. 2 Corinthians 9, 11. It says, yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when you take your gifts to those, and when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank who? You, who is the giver? The Bible says, they will thank God. Right? So in other words, somebody who receives your gift will be able to say, thank him, the most holy one. And with, generous, with thankful heart, he will say, thank God because I am rich. And those who are weak will say, I am strong, okay, through your generosity. And that is our topic this evening, generosity, all right? Thank you very much for inviting the ADRA department to lead in the Vesper program this evening. And yeah, ADRA, as a local minister, uh, ministry, ministerial department of your church, is the only department that can raise funds outside Sabbath school. And that is per the church manual of our Seventh Adventist Church, right, Brother Amado? The other department who can collect funds is Sabbath school. Other than that, if there's anybody, a department head or an elder trying to collect money from you, that's a suspect, right? Only Adra and Sabbath school. Sabbath school and divine worship, oh, we pass the offering back, right? <laughs> yeah. And there's a reason for that, okay? Because ADRA is the benevolent uh, department of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, okay, around the world. And there was a time when ADRA doesn't want to be associated with the Seventh-day Adventist Church or any religious uh, organization. It's just because the service that they give is not for Seventh-day Adventists only, but everybody around the world who needs help. And the funding, okay, does not only come from Seventh-day Adventist Church members, and the government also give uh, money to ADRA in order to be able to help uh, human, humanitarian needs. And because of that, okay, governments will be questioned why they are putting money to churches. So ADRA was created as a separate entity. They are not called Seventh-day Adventists, okay, but run by the Adventist Church. And so it also is true with other organizations like nonprofit organizations like World Vision, you're familiar with that, and other kinds of visions. Okay. And there are also problems in the field. Okay. When a disaster strike in areas that are non-Christian, okay, the, their government is very selective as to who will come to help them. And you will be 
pleased to know that Adra is being chosen usually to help in, uh, in calamities on areas where Christians are not allowed to come, right? So something to be proud of. And when that happens, when Adra gets into that uh, uh, location, all other nonprofit organizations channel all their funds and help through Adra. Okay, so that's why everything like you don't see Seventh-day Adventist Church Adra. It's not advertised that way. No. So don't be hurt. Just keep on giving to Adra. And yeah, our generosity counts. Okay, generosity. Ellen G. White speaks about generosity. He said that generosity is the law that sustains the whole universe, if not planet Earth, okay? That's the universal law of university. And she starts by saying, Brother Armand, that from the spring, okay, up somewhere in the mountains of nowhere, spring bubbles out and it creates a rivulet. And that from that rivulet, it joins a bigger stream. And that bigger stream joins a mighty river. And that mighty river snakes its way to the ocean, which it cannot fill. Because when it reaches the ocean, the ocean comes up to its brim and it creates a pressure underground that pushes the water back to the spring. And do you see a loop there that goes around and around? That is the principle of generosity. And if you have a drone or you get a bird's eye view of the path of that river down into the valleys, into the desert sands, across the mountains to the ocean, it is very easy to detect it where the river is, because on its path, it's marked with verdant hue, okay? Of vegetation, lush vegetation, everywhere the river goes, there is always vegetation. Do you agree? And there's life teeming around it, okay? So if you want to see how the water uh, sustains, these living things that comes across on the river, uh, river banks, okay? Try to go to Capilano Extension Bridge, that part there, and they have one tree that they cut the barks off and put a glass casing on it so that you can see how the water climbs up the tree. Ren Ren, did you see that? And how many gallons of water does it does the what uh, does the tree siphon up per second? Do you think that's a huge two thousand years old tree, right? You see that water travel up the tree to sustain the leaves, and then when it reaches the top, it just evaporates, right, Ren? and go back to its mission into the river until it gets to the ocean. According to science, not one drop of water is lost in, since the world began. It's always intact on that cycle. When the water gets in the plant, it does not become a part of the plant. Okay. When the water gets into the tree, it does not become a wood or a bark or a leaf. No. It just travels into it, deliver the nutrients that a plant needs, and then phew, leaves the tree go back to the ocean. Isn't that interesting? How God manages the sustainability of the universe. And it goes like that like a loop. Now, 
you will say, how does that connect with generosity, brother Joel? Let's go to Luke 6, verse 38. Luke 6, verse 38. Okay. And I'll ask Ren Ren, the treasurer of the Student Association, to read Luke 6, 38. And listen carefully if you can find a loop, the generosity loop. Okay. Are you ready, Ren? Yeah. All right. Okay. Maybe you can. Uh, okay. Just sit down. And... Okay. Luke six thirty eight. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Thank you, Ren. So what did that verse say? Did you see a loop? Give, and you will receive. There's the loop. And Dr. Luke further explained it. Your gift will return to you in full. Okay? Press down, shaken together to make room for more. Right? Shaken. And running over, poured on your lap. Do you like that? Okay? And the amount that we you give will determine the amount you get back. Where can you find that principle? Is that physics? The amount that you give is the standard of the amount that you receive back. Do you see that working in nature? Well, I, we already understand that that's how water cycle happened. But Luke 6, 38 says it's not only on nature, but it's happening in the life of a generous person. Okay? All of us here are generous, so you can attend to that. Right? You can attest to that uh, principle. Okay? Why? How is that certain? How is that sure? Okay? What is the guarantee that that will happen? If I give, it will return back to me. Okay? How about requesting the president of this student association to read Proverbs 19, verse 17. Okay, what is the guarantee that when I give, it will come back to me? Okay, if it's a law, then that's, that's how it is. Okay, I can watch the process until it comes back to me. Agree, Sister Jonah? Uh, let's see. Let's see Proverbs 19, verse 17. What is the guarantee? We want to know that when I give today, I receive it back tomorrow. <laughs> there you go. Is that the guarantee that you need? If you're generous, someone in need okay you are actually in that process lending to god he himself will pay it back was there any case that you know that god was in default in paying your account no okay so that's the guarantee god is behind that law of generosity Okay. Principles of generosity. Don't worry, I just prepare about eight, seven questions, and then I can reduce it to three. <laughs> Principle of generosity. Now, let's see. Proverbs 11, 24 to 26. Okay. Let's see in the Bible, what are the principles of generosity? Can I request rents? You have that in your electronic. Proverbs 11, 24 to 26. There is one who scatters, yet increases more. And there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. A generous soul will be made rich, 
and he who waters will also be watered himself. The people will curse him who is old grave, but blessing will be sorry, blessing will be on the head of him who sells it. Wow. Why is King Solomon, thank you, Renz. Why is King Solomon so sure in saying these proverbs or principles? Okay. He said, if you give freely, you will become rich. Right? Those who doesn't want to give, stingy, will become poor. Okay. Those are very strong statements, right? It's like it will be sure to happen. The generous will prosper or will become wealthy. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. See the look? Okay, so this must be a scientific principle then, right? The people curse those who hoard their grain. Okay. People who are not generous, okay, they, they don't have much friends, I think, rather or mother, right? <laughs> they cannot treat you in a restaurant, boko, no. <laughs> but they bless the one who sells in times of need. See, if you are a generous person, many people praise for you. That's why you are blessed. Right? Okay, I was reminded of a treasurer of a church one day say, you know, a treasurer does not die easily. Friend Ray is a treasurer. So we ask him, why? A lot of people pray for me. Because, <laughs> because if I've gone missing, then I cannot pay their debt. <laughs> All right. So, that's the principle of generos generosity. And we know it's guaranteed because God is behind it. How about 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6 to 8? Okay, I may request Elder Amado. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 8. We want to know how this principle of generosity applies. Okay, put us in a proper perspective. Wow, so thank you very much. You get the principle right there? God loves a cheerful giver. Every Christian who finds an opportunity to help others in need, okay, should be desirous, okay, should be the first one to give help. That's what God expects, okay? And you have to give it cheerfully, not grudgingly, right? Or reluctantly. In other words, you plan ahead when you want to help. Okay? That's why in Andhra, this is the department that teaches us to be generous. Even if nobody's asking for help, it's regular that we always promote, hey, give to Andhra. Okay? Because you don't know when is emergency coming, you plan. And when the pastor stands up here and say, we need to help, okay? When you draw money from your pocket and you get one twenty dollars and two fifty dollars, so which one shall I give here? All right, is it 20? No, that's too much if it's $50. So that's not time to decide, 
that is given grudgingly or with pressure from the pastor anymore. Decide to be generous even before the need comes or arises. So it's, and what else did it says there? The farmer who plants only a few seeds will get small crop. But the one who plants generously will get generous crop. What principle is that in physics? Is that the same as, okay, is there engineers here? Is that the same as for every action, there is a reaction, right? Small reaction, small action, very little reaction, right? True? So how does that apply to gener generosity? Okay, if you know that principle, then you can decide. I help more, plenty will be blessed. I help less, only less will be blessed. Is that true? Will that be the case? Okay. okay. Now we'll go to the question, what gener generosity is and is not. How does generosity look like? when you see it, is that generosity or is this only, what do you call it? Forget the word. It's English, so it's difficult. Matthew 6, 1 to 4. Okay. Hypocrisy, right, yeah. How do you know it's a genuine generosity or not? Matthew, Six, one to four. Can I request Elder Leon? Matthew six, one to four. Yeah. We want to know which one is generosity, which one is not. Do good to please God. Take care that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, they will see your So, are we able to distinguish whether the gifts that we receive from a generous heart or not? For example, you receive a medal. Most generous, put it in your neck, and you always wear it every day. Are you still generous? No. Okay, the Bible says it should be given secretly. Nobody should know, right? So that's one thing to know whether it's you're really serious about helping other people or you're just serious about showing of yourself, okay? So generosity is not a show of game, no, okay? So how much is, how much is generous? How much money? Can we then tell that you are generous or not? Do you want to know? How much shall you give in order to be categorized as a generous person? Okay. Do you have your Bible with you, Brother Armand? <laughs> Sorry. Second Corinthians 8, verse 12.
8, verse 12. Yeah, okay, Arvin, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Arvin. Yeah, if your mind is willing, whatever amount is a generous gift, right? If you give it eagerly from heart, okay? And you have to give according to what you have and not what you don't have. What does that mean? Okay. You don't make promises like, hey, I will donate $100,000, okay? But you cannot afford it. So never mind. Okay, always base it on your whatever income you're earning. Okay, so in other words, nobody should dictate in this principle no pastor or leader of a church will say, hey, you give $10, you give $20, you are rich, $100. No. Just according to your heart's dictates, right? So that is generosity. Okay, I'll jump my question. I want to share with you the unwritten law in the Ten Commandments. There are 10, ten right? You haven't read something else there. There's a law that you cannot read on the Ten Commandments, but it's there, okay? And the problem is you cannot, okay, you, or you can miss heaven if you miss this unwritten law. Agree? There's a law in the Ten Commandments, not written. There is not, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt commit adultery, etc. Okay, but there's one law, it's not written, but it's there. If you miss this, you will miss heaven. You want to know? 1 John 3, 17. Okay. Oh, okay. I request Elder Dan Tankson. First John three seventeen. But whoever has his words do and feed his brother in need and shut up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? Question, right? Somebody who is rich, okay, sees a brother or, or a sister in need, but does not show any compassion to that brother or sister in need. Okay. The question of Jen is, how can God's love be in that person? Impossible, right? What is God's love? We know the famous love verse, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, have eternal life. If that love is not in that person, is He going to have eternal life or perish? You perish. And that is what John is saying. How can that love be in that person who, seeing the need of a brother or sister, did not respond with compassion? Okay? In other words, brothers and sisters, you can miss heaven by missing generosity. Amen? Not in the Ten Commandments? I think it's there but you cannot read it like thou shalt not skill. Okay, 
Let's see an example here. Mark 10, 17, 23. Maybe this will be our last. Mark 10, 17 to 23. This is a story, message for us today. Let's see if you can get to heaven without being generous. All right. Mark 10, 17 to 23. If you are there, let's read it together. I'm reading it from the New Living Translation. That's my Bible. Okay? Right. This is the rich man who asked Jesus about how can he get to heaven. You know the story. As Jesus was starting out in his way to Jerusalem, a man, the rich young ruler, came running up to him, knelt down and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Okay. Did you hear what the rich young ruler asked? What must I do to inherit eternal life? Go to heaven and live forever. Okay. Later on, you will know that that question is wrong. Because when you go to verse 18, God said, why do you call me good? Jesus asked, only God is truly good. Okay, but to answer your question, you know the commandments. Keep the commandments. What are the commandments? Jesus said, you must not murder, you must not commit adultery, you must not steal, you must not testify falsely, you must not cheat anyone, honor your father and mother, etc., etc. So obviously, he is talking about the Ten Commandments. He's just trying this rich young ruler. He said, if you can obey the Ten Commandments, then you're good, you're ready for heaven. Right? Is that what Jesus said in that verse? And the man replied, teacher, I obeyed all these commands since I was young. Wow, who among you can memorize the Ten Commandments? Kids, okay, you memorize it since you were young. Then you're go good for heaven. That's what Jesus was telling the young man, right? You obey it since you're young, then go to heaven. You're ready. Looking at the man, Jesus felt genuine love for him. He said these words. There is still one thing you haven't done. What? The young man just told Jesus, Ten Commandments, since I was young, I obeyed them all. Okay. What did he miss? Something that wasn't written there. Okay. What is that? There is still one thing that you haven't done, he told him. Go and sell your possession and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. Where is that in the commandment? But the story goes on. At this, the man's face fell and he went away sad for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Did you get the point of Jesus there? Ten commandments. Only one is lacking. This rich young ruler missed heaven by just one point. He wants to go to heaven. This one thing he cannot do. Too bad. It may be that we are sitting here today listening to the words of God, the Bible, okay? We might be thinking that we have 10 commandments intact because we come to Sabbath the right day, Sabbath day, Saturday, okay? But then we will miss heaven by this much. Each. 
the secret, there is an unwritten rule in the Ten Commandments. How did Jesus summarize all the ten? Okay. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, makes it ten. How do you love your neighbor? My friends, Jesus is telling us tonight, your generosity counts. Right? Your generosity counts. How many of us tonight okay, is ready to have a generous life for God? Okay. Maybe you want to know the greatest man who lived on earth. How generous he is. Elder Leon, can I request you to read John 15, verse 3. We want to know who is the greatest man who lives on earth. Is he generous? How generous he is. Tell us when you read John 15, verse 13. John 15, verse 3. 13. 13. 13. Mm -hmm. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Who can beat that? Greater love has no one than this, that a man will lay down his life for his friends. If you think $20 is too much, okay, how about that man's life? Who were thinking, who he, who he was thinking about you and me when he laid down his life on that cross? That's the extravagance, that's the generosity of this man who loves us all. May this be the prayer in our hearts tonight that we can be generous as our Lord is generous as well. Thank you very much. Uh, Brother Joel Batulayan, that was a very timely message, and that's Adra. Um, in our offering uh, envelope, there is a portion there, especially if you do uh, online giving, there's a portion for Adra, and you can uh, uh, give your offering online. Uh, we know that the world is sick, and there's so many floods especially in Pakistan, in China, in South Korea. And there are also some countries that they have really uh, very big famine. I don't know, there's, there's flood in this area and there's famine on this side. But, you know, as I read, more than 1,000 people were dead in Pakistan's flood just lately. And also in the famine in China. On the other side of China, there's a flood. So these people are the recipient of our ADRA resources, and ADRA needs us in order to address the needs. Brethren, our full evangelism is fast approaching, and aside for the preparation, we also have to prepare spiritually for this uh, full evangelism. Otherwise, it's just that we go there, and without the blessings of God, without His guidance, then uh, we don't know what will be uh, the result. But the apostles, before they went outside of uh, Judea, they gathered into one, and they were one in prayer, and it resulted to a lot of baptism. So before our praise team will give us the closing song tonight, we will have a very special prayer by twos. Uh, this is for our uh, full evangelism. So shall we start now?
Thank you, Uncle Joel, for the message on ADRA and on generosity. And thank you for the ADRA department for um, this Vesper. Our closing song is found in hymn number 195. Uh, what's it called? Oh, Showers of Blessing. Please rise. <laughs> together. Our mighty Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus Christ, who laid down his life for us all. We have the confidence to ask you tonight that you will rain down in our hearts 
the blessing from heaven and help us to be generous in a way that these blessings will also reach those who need your help. Please forgive us from all our sins and please guide us home with your leading hands. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please be seated. Um, there's a few announcements. Uh, we're so glad that our uh, uh, senior pastor will be back tomorrow. Uh, he will be our speaker. And for those who are watching online, we'd like to invite all the students to please come here. We'll be, our senior pastor will be having a special prayer for all our students because, you know, it's the first week of classes and they still have nine more months and three weeks to go before the end of the 22-23 term. So we need God's guidance for that. And for our program tomorrow, our Sabbath school starts at 9.30, and our worship is at 11 o'clock, and I guess there will be concert in the afternoon uh, by uh, the sister of our youth pastor. And then uh, the youth sundown worship will be at 5.30 p.m. Thank you so much for joining us in our Vesper program tonight and our participants. Thank you so much. May God bless us as we uh, go home. God bless.